Inside Mercer Basketball with Coach Bob Hoffman and your host, Rick Cameron. Brought to you by Wild Wing Cafe. Well, hello everyone. Welcome to Wild Wing. Shops at River Crossing in Macon, Georgia. We're talking Mercer Basketball. Head Coach Bob Hoffman. Coach, uh, amazingly, this season is flying by. Here we are, mid-February. We look on the calendar just a couple of weeks away as the conference tournament. Where does the season go? Well, it goes by quickly, and the uh, older you get, I think the faster it goes. <laughs> Every, my parents used to tell me that, but now I'm experiencing it. Absolutely. I know you're older than me, so you probably, it probably goes faster for you. I was hoping you wouldn't <laughs> defer to that, Coach, but that's okay. All right, let's go back uh, last week. We made our annual uh, trip into the mountains. Fortunately, no. Well, we did see some snow we after did. all. Game did day, BMI. it did snow. Well, we kept our string alive of it snowing every time we've been to VMI, Virginia yep. Military Institute. Uh, it was a great day. Our guys played at a high level. It was amazing how we executed on the offensive and defensive end. Uh, I, I thought we started just a tad slow, but after that, we were really good the whole whole day. Yeah, five guys in double figures, uh, Coach, and you out-rebounded uh, the key debts 39-28, which you knew you had to do. Yeah, because those guys can really get going. Peterson, one of the best scores in the conference and the amazing thing we were able to hold Elabita not scoring at all and, yeah. and as I told you and talked about on multiple occasions how many times uh, I believe that he's the key to their team and yeah. obviously in in that game uh, holding him to zero probably helped with the separation of how we ended up winning by 30. Yeah you really just can't put a proper description of what it means to hold uh, Peterson down. I mean, we didn't hold him completely down, but he got his points, no, but he didn't take off down. on us like he did last year. Yeah, I mean, well, he has the ability to score from the free throw line, mid-range, tip dunks. Uh, for a six-foot guy, his elevation's amazing and how he gets, gets to the rim and he can shoot those long-range threes. Uh, we were fortunate to get him out of sync a little yeah. bit, and he didn't hit the shots he normally has done, but uh, I thought our zone and our man was really good against him on that day. I think he came back 48 hours later against the Citadel and got his 40 plus yeah, points. Yeah, he had an amazing game. I, I'm glad it happened a couple <laughs> days later. And then we uh, made our way down to Johnson City, Coach, and uh, played ETSU. Uh, these guys, you told us many, many times, uh, in transition, they can really be effective. It can hurt you, and they got a couple of easy baskets that way. Hit a couple of threes. Really, they got off to a tremendous start. I think even their own people yeah. were amazed at how the fast start they got off. Yeah, to. after the gun sounded and uh, destroyed everybody's ears, oh, yeah. then they hit every shot that they took for about three or four minutes, including multiple threes. It just got the separation that made it difficult. They didn't hit as many as we got back into the game a little bit, but uh, that spurt right there beginning yeah. basically was the difference in the game the rest of the night. And, um, you know, our guys really fought hard. I thought we played with great intensity. We just weren't uh, scoring the way you have to against a team that can put up as many points as they did on that night. Cromer was really special yeah. hitting three after three. Uh, you can't let him get those kind of shots that he got against us. Uh, at Johnson City. We actually coached after being down uh, by a large amount in the first half. We actually cut it to 10 once in the yeah. second half and had the ball and actually was even in the second half, each team scoring 44 points. Yeah, we had opportunities. We needed to get it single digits, hoping to make those shots a little tougher. When you, when you get that kind of separation that they had on us, they weren't really having to think about any of those, kind, those shots. They were just uh, playing, uh, throwing, playing basketball, kicking it up, and uh, when they were open, they let it fly, and it was going in more often than not. But, uh, you know, I, they're a really good team. They're well coached. Yep. Uh, they had a great crowd. Yeah. Uh, they've done a tremendous job of continuing to make that environment and that building a, a good home court advantage for them. Uh, and, and it was on Saturday against us. Uh, uh, their, their team's really good. It's one of those things you've got to – you got to be in that game from the beginning like yep. we did at our place. Yep. And we controlled the game until about six minutes ago when we played them the first time. And uh, those are the kinds of teams that you can't let get up on you like they did on us. Uh, it's really hard to come back on because they're going to play solid defense and they're going to execute at a high level and feel good about the shots they take. All right, Coach, following those two games, uh, our Sonic Player of the Week, who would you think? Well, I think it's got to be Rion Holland again. I mean, he just continues to get points. Uh, makes plays, um, was really consistent in both games. Uh, he's continuing to figure out when. He made some good passes in the East Tennessee game. 
They're really hedging out on him hard. He found some passing lanes inside. Those are the things that we finished the last two weeks. If we can get just a little bit better on our passing angles and our post passing, and then our post play get stronger and finishing and getting some and ones, it would really make a difference, I think, in our scoring ability, yep. but also putting pressure on defenses. And then our Marco's delivery of the week, Coach. Well, we're going to go with Corey Kilby. I agree with that 100%. Uh, yeah, he had, well, you didn't agree on the other one, I guess. I did. I well, 200, you were as emphatic on the I other one. I didn't want to interrupt you. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> but anyway, it's your I show. Yeah, you get, you get Corey had a big game. Yeah, he did. Uh, he's been playing really good. Uh, had a double his first double digits, maybe the second time of the season, but uh, just hit some big shots, looking more and more comfortable playing multiple positions for us after Ethan Stair went out, and uh, that's not an easy thing to do. We've had a couple guys over the years be able to do it, and uh, I, I think he's really uh, just understanding more what's expected of him and just stepping into that role at a high level. And one of these nights, our fans is going to get to see the former high school quarterback when a team is pressing us when he throws the leg to the floor for an assist. That would, that would be good. That means we'd have another <laughs> one-possession game, more than likely, which we've had 11 of at this yeah. point. Uh, that would be great if it went in our favor. All right, time now to uh, go to our player profiles. We've got a couple of seniors coming down the stretch. Their last games, one of them is J.J. Nganga. Let's go to campus now and talk with J.J. when we return with more Inside Mercer Basketball. the game plan rush into the wild wing cafe and tackle one of our new steakhouse burgers 100 percent angus 100 percent great it's an all-star lineup that can win you tickets to the biggest games of the year where we're back on campus in hawkins arena as we continue with our player spotlights today jj and ganga is joining us jj welcome to show uh, a native of France a question I've been wanting to ask you all season pronounce your hometown for us Robert Villiers. okay there you go that's how you pronounce it I'm gonna work on that all right uh, JJ if you would walk us through uh, allow our fans to get to know you a little bit better okay. as a youngster growing up what did you enjoy doing besides playing basketball um I think I was just one of his kids who just just like to have fun yep um, definitely like to enjoy the, I want to say, enjoy, you know, other people around me, you know, as a kid, like, yeah. it's just something great now that kind of stick with me, just, you know, just relationship with people. Yeah. Speaking of relationship with people, do you ever meet a stranger? Every day. I don't believe it, because for a little bit of time I've been around you, you're the most friendliest student athlete I think I've ever met. You really get great joy in speaking to people. Thank you. And going back and forth with folks, do you not? I think I do. I think I do. You're going to be a politician one day? No, I'm okay. <laughs> I'm okay. All right, walk us through your athletic uh, getting to the point where you are today as a college player. Mm -hmm. uh, walk us through maybe high school. I know you went to New Mexico. Kind of just walk through the experiences that you obtained mm -hmm. before you got here at Berkshire. Okay, well, uh, make a long story short, I first landed in Kansas in high school. Okay. Uh, I did six months in Kansas. Uh, I graduated, but because I wasn't eligible, my transcript, my, the courses that I took back home didn't translate because actually back home, like I had like a different courses. Mm -hmm. So anyway, so because of this, uh, I had to go in junior college. And so at the high school, I went to a junior college in Oklahoma. I spent two years in JUCO and I graduated um, in 2012 from JUCO. Okay. Now I graduated in 2014 from JUCO okay. and then I went on to the University of New Mexico. And uh, obviously playing for New Mexico, as we look at the non-conference schools you we played, the Florida Clemson's Auburn's, really no stranger to you to mm -hmm. play the big name schools. That's just another opponent mm -hmm. anytime we play those type of guys, correct? Definitely, definitely. All right, tell us uh, game day preparation. As uh, um, you wake up the morning of a game, what do you do either mentally or physically to prepare yourself to play that day? Uh, well, I really just try to remember like the scouting report. Um, I try to remember what the coach wants us to do, especially defensively. Um, I try to kind of uh, work through the plays offensively mm -hmm. um, and really I just try to get some right stretch, eat the right foods and just get my mind right. All right, you've played a lot of games, a lot of experience. Uh, what do you feel for this Mercer team? What is the number one thing talent-wise you bring to mm -hmm. this team? 
Uh, well, I think one thing with a bring is positive energy. Well, that's yeah. for sure. Outside of skills, um, that's definitely one thing that I, one thing for sure. But I know I can bring to this team positive energy, and I think um, whenever I get the ball down low, like I can bring some scoring too to this yeah. team. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and I can help with rebound. I think so too. So. Yeah. You and uh, Fish, the only seniors on this team, even mm -hmm. though it's your first year on this team. Still, you've got this experience. You are a senior. Tell us what it's like with some of the younger guys getting them acclimated to getting on the bus and taking these road trips and mm -hmm. getting ready for these big games. What can you help out as a senior for the younger guys? Uh, I think one thing I can is just share my experience. That's definitely uh, one of the things. Uh, another thing is just keep encouraging the freshmen because I know sometimes, you know, they struggle a little bit with confidence and they struggle a little bit with, you know, just kind of like get used to what the coach wants them to do. So yeah. always be here and be that positive voice. We just push him, you know, going forward. At Mercer, academically, what are you majoring in? What sort of degree are you working on here? Uh, actually, right now I'm on the grad program, in okay. a grad school program. Uh, my major is actually a leadership education. Yeah. Um, so, and uh, I'm hoping to finish this program by the spring. And when you finish that, once you hang the sneakers up, what mm -hmm. would you want to do for the remainder of your life? I still try to figure out right now. Still um, trying to figure that out. Hopefully, um, I'm still playing on playing professional basketball after college yeah. for a little yeah. while, and uh, I'm still trying to figure it out. Final question, uh, JJ. What do you enjoy most about playing college basketball? Probably my teammates. Yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. And by that, uh, hanging out with them? Just or hanging out, uh, practice, just relationship. Relationship yeah. you build uh, 12 years, just relationship in general, that's my thing. Now, extending that question one step further, we started off talking about you have a smile on your face every day, every moment. What is the key to being as happy as you are every day of your life? Well, uh, I guess there's a different secret, but me personally, it's just personal beliefs. Yeah. Um, you know, I, for me, my faith is really something that actually had a big impact in my life. So personally for me, it's just personal belief. All right. So, uh, you're a great influence, JJ. You've been a welcome it. addition, and we Thank can't you. wait to see all the great games that you've got in store left for Mercer University later Thank this you. year. Appreciate it. JJ Nganga, our visitor, our student profile this evening. We're going to come back up to Wild Wing, rejoin Bob Hoffman, and talk more on Inside Mercer Basketball. For over 20 years, Mercer has relied on Forsyth Street Orthopedics. Their team of Dodgers helped keep our players on the court. As a graduate of Mercer and a partner of Forsyth Street Orthopedics, we are proud to sponsor and take care of Mercer athletes. We work with Mercer Sports Medicine to return our injured athletes to competition as soon as their injuries allow and hopefully protect them from further injury. Forsyth Street Orthopedics, getting better together. Go Bears! Well, we're back at Wild Wing Cafe. Coach, uh, among the many players of great character you had through the years, the nine years I've worked with you, uh, by far, J.J. Nganga is the one I can honestly say has never met a stranger. That guy is amazing how he communicates, and no matter what's going on with his individual uh, basketball or what everybody else's experience, he's got a smile, and he's there to pick everybody up. Uh, he, he knows more people on campus than anybody on our team, maybe put together. Yeah. Um, and it's just because of his attitude and uh, he, he walks over, he, there's not a time he doesn't come in the gym when he goes and shakes hands with everybody and asks them how they're doing yeah. and what's going on in their life. And it's just an overflow of what he has in his heart. Yeah. You can see it and how he treats people and how he acts. And, uh, what a blessing he's been to be a part of our program. He had the bus driver doing a 360 handshake the other day, and I thought he had the <laughs> driver's hands tangled up on the steering column. We might not be able to get home. But. Well, I'm glad he wasn't driving when he was doing that. <laughs> All right, Coach. That, would be, the, that we, would be a hard part. Talk about players of high character. Uh, you have these guys once they yeah. get here. I know you're very committed to doing community work and, and getting our players out in the community. Share with us some of the things that our guys have been a part of this year. Well, I mean, uh, we, we spent a lot. We do... Uh, a reading program at the elementary schools. Jonathan Howard heads that up and our graduate assistants help set up some of that and then our players that are available go out and JJ's been one of the hits on the circuit this year. Uh, uh, but there's been multiple other opportunities that's happened with that and a lot of times those kids will come to games 
Uh, but but I, I just love the fact that they're able to go into the schools. You have to go through uh, certain procedures to get approved, yeah. and we do that every year through Bibb County Schools and the private schools in town. Uh, I think it's just important for those guys to see how people in town think about them. Mm -hmm. And then those young youngsters get to come to a game and remember who they were and yeah. say hi. And, and over the years, that's I think has helped grow our attendance, helped grow our product and what we want to do because we want to be about making a difference in the community and making an impact. And we've been able to do that through that. We've done uh, uh, multiple other helping products. Uh, uh, can't even think of it right now. Make an impact. Yeah. Ingleside, yeah. we've done uh, multiple ones of those uh, where we're building or we're, uh, I mean, you, you can just yeah. look at all the different things we've done. And, and, and the most important thing to me is for our guys to see what an impact that they can have as an individual yeah. and we can have as a group. Uh, we go to the children's hospital every Christmas, take toys down there. There's some that are reported. Some people know what we do and some things uh, that goes unnoticed. And we don't try to take cameras everywhere we yeah, go. Yeah. But uh, Jonathan Howard's taken a few pictures. I think maybe the people are getting to see a few yeah, of those yeah. as we're talking right now. And uh, I think it's just, uh, it's maybe one of the most important things we're able to do is, uh, you know, it's Mercer's mindset also is to go and impact the community you're a part of and make a difference in the community not just be here soaking up uh, trying to make grades soaking up education but trying to give something back and uh, that's what we've been about uh, since we've been here and it's been fun to see how they've yeah. uh, embraced it our guys have really embraced it. there's a big difference coach in being on in the arena floor and hearing the younger fans yell and applaud for you as opposed to working with them one-on-one -on -one and looking eyeball to eyeball really uh, I think it impacts the players uh, as much as uh, both it's a win-win situation yeah I mean we were uh, they were at a elementary just the other week I know there was an article written about it and uh, JJ was a part of that one where he went and helped a young man up and he got more involved uh, where there's some at-risk kids yeah. sometimes yeah. Uh, during lunch and during recess it's the hardest time for them where people don't interact with them and they're kind of by themselves and our our players were a part of uh, a big outreach program that's ongoing in different elementaries here uh, there's programs that are happening right now I think are going to be fantastic uh, we also have done at-risk camps on campus where kids stayed over overnight and we've worked uh, doing tutoring and different things with those type of young men that are are really trying to they call it gear up it's a national program but we've been partnered with them uh, trying to get those guys through high school yeah. and see what they could do if they get on a college campus and uh, that it is possible yeah. and some of our guys have come through tough situations themselves not very many but a few of them have and it's great for them to be able to communicate that they can get it done. Yeah, and certainly, Coach, uh, the day that they walk across the stage and get that diploma, yeah. you as a head coach want them to have a full experience at Mercer, not just winning basketball games, but being a better person, ready to go into the world and make an impact. Yeah, I mean, and, and there are uh, all kinds of opportunities out there if you allow yourself to be a part of, whether it's through a Christian organization or a, a nonprofit organization, and we've been matched up and teamed up with all kinds of those groups throughout the nine years and we've been blessed to partner with them uh, to try try to get our guys exposed to what it takes to uh, lead by example and not just always waiting for somebody to applaud for you and waiting for them to come watch you but get out and be a part of what they're doing and seeing if you can uh, impact their life yeah. uh, for the days ahead. Absolutely. All right, conference tournament just uh, a couple of weeks away. We'll take a break, be back, talk about the SOCON tournament. We return with more Inside Mercer Basketball. As a business owner, you need to choose the financial direction that's best for you to find a clear path to growth and success. At BBT, we support businesses of all sizes with personal service and advice. Sharing the sound financial knowledge we've gained over more than 140 years so you can move ahead with confidence. Talk to us today about your business goals. BB&T, sharing knowledge for a brighter direction. 
Well, believe it or not, the final segment for this uh, year on the TV show. We've got a lot to cover in about a few minutes, Coach. Uh, first, let's talk about the uh, SOCON. As we're coming down the stretch, uh, four games to go, two at home, two on the road, and still a lot of positioning that's going to take place in these last uh, four games for most folks before we get to Asheville uh, in a couple of weeks. Yeah, uh, it's going to be an amazing tournament. Teams are so close, and uh, there's been uh, multiple upsets throughout the yeah. course of the season. I'm sure there'll be a few more before we get to Asheville. Uh, and I know there'll be some once we're yeah. on the floor yeah. in that Coliseum there. I think it's a great venue. I know I've talked to uh, multiple fans of ours that are planning on making the trip, have already made reservations. Uh, we had a great crowd down there last year. And yeah. Really excited about getting there and seeing what happens, uh, trying to win three or four games in, in, a, in a row to get to the NCAA tournament. All right, prior to doing that, uh, normally we just cover a game or two, the game next week, but since this is the last show, let's try to recap as yeah. we can. We go to the Citadel Saturday, we come home for UNCG, we go to Chattanooga next Saturday, and then finish in a very tough game on Monday, the week of the tournament, in our uh, Hawkins Arena against Sanford. So yeah, and it, yeah everybody will be playing that Monday, so it's it's, I think it's fair to everybody. I think it was a good way for us to end the conference season. They were trying to find a way to get another game in. And I like how it, it turned out that way. Uh, but four games uh, in about eight days, be nine days, I guess, something like that. Yeah. But it's going to be a tough stretch, but everybody's going through it. Um, uh, there's only two teams only be playing three in that stretch. And I, I just like how our guys are uh, really trying to find themselves individually and collectively and how we continue to make play after play and I, I really like how we're trending. We didn't finish the game well at East Tennessee as far as winning the game but we competed and we're competing every night out against really good teams uh, and we've had a, a tough go uh, in some of the games that we feel like we could have won and we didn't and, but I, I like how our guys are still approaching trying to get better understanding that there's still hope for what we can accomplish, and it's not over yet, no doubt about it. Well, I think, Coach, as you look at the standings and see who is currently in first place would be Furman at 12-2, and two. and if Mercer fans want an indication of well, how we might match up in that tournament, you look at the two Furman games, I know, we, we, you know we don't want to discuss those two-point losses, but the fact yeah, is don't. Uh, for the first place team, team in first place, both of those games, a bucket either way, could have changed that out. Yeah, better coaching, better play call, <laughs> something would have been good. But I, I, I just like, Parity, though. yeah, I just like how we are. I think you're right. I mean, there's multiple teams could win. Yeah. And uh, it, it will be a, it should be a great tournament as it always has been. But I think this year, year could be even more unique than it, uh, than multiple. I just believe it's going to be a a fantastic tournament. I'm excited about getting there and seeing how it plays out. And to double the Mercer fans' experience, uh, going to give a shout out yeah. real quick. Susie Gardner's team, uh, more, they currently would be the number two seed, could still be the number one. But what a great way to see both the men and women. The women will open up on uh, Thursday and the guys on Friday. So one trip to Asheville, you get to see uh, both men and women maybe run the table there. Should, in should be It should be a great tournament. And uh, they have done a tremendous job their players have played a high level and uh, they're hoping to finish. Uh, that's their buzzword I know for this season as they came really close to going to NCAA. Got to go to the NIT last season and uh, one game away or yep. three or four possessions away from going last year. Uh, but it is a great venue. Uh, a lot of tremendous shops and restaurants in Nashville. Great place to visit and I know we're going to have big time fan support as we get there. Well, as we start to wind down, Coach, I know uh, you're very thankful of the support we've received oh, yeah. once again this year. As I, In my little low seat there in the arena, and, uh, I can't remember a game that I looked up at the front door that I could see the glass. So many people coming to every game, standing room only. We've had great support again this year at Hawkins Arena, among the best in the conference. Yeah, it is, and we're right like second in the league in attendance right now, and a lot of people get credit for that. Um, Daniel Tate and Jim Cole, and the president, have worked hard on that along with Jonathan. Howard spends many minutes and time, many hours trying to help get people there and has for several years. But I, I love how hard our, our everybody's uh, vested in what we're doing, want us to be successful and trying to help us. And crowds definitely yeah. uh, make a difference and an impact. And, and I know it will continue to be that way as we finish out these last two. We could be real close to the highest uh, average attendance we've ever had since uh, ever 
the oh, history absolutely, of Mercer yeah. basketball. Every year it's gotten better, and we hope we can do that this season. All right, Coach, uh, final question. Obviously, there was a few games that we would rather have finished a couple points uh, better off. But overall, in your mind, how much better is this team now than it was when we began the season? The progress has been made, and now you're not season as a head basketball coach. Well, I, I like how, how we're finishing. I like how we're trending. I like uh, if we can just get, like we talked about at the beginning of the show, if we can get a little more post play, we can get more consistent in post passing, getting the ball in and uh, putting pressure at a different place than we have been all year, that would be a huge thing for us finishing the season. Uh, today's practice was good at that. We worked on it a little more, uh, but I, I think we're in a good place. I mean, uh, we went to the finals. Uh, we were in a similar position we're in right now when we're in the Atlantic Sun. We were a couple of baskets away from going to the NCAA tournament that year. Uh, it would be a blessing to be in that position again. Uh, there's nothing keeping us from it yeah. other than some great execution and great belief and what we can accomplish. Just think, Coach, when we do the first TV show next year, we'll be in your 10th season. Wow, that's that's a long time. 10-year <laughs> celebration. Have that, you been here the whole time? I hope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it will be 10 years. Uh, uh, it's, it's been a great ride. A lot yeah. of people, uh, our, all our sponsors that make this show right. possible, right. Uh, love Rick Howard at Wild Wing Cafe. He's been our TV sponsor, our main TV sponsor ever since we started doing the TV show. What a blessing he's been, and uh, all the people that you see on the show uh, listed, uh, make sure you mention it to them. It has been uh, great for our program as we're able to do some extra things because of the show uh, with recruits and different things with our team with meals. So we're blessed, and uh, thank you for being a part of it, Rick. You've done another great job. Thank Becky's behind the camera, and she works harder than any of us putting the show together, and thank, thank you guys for an amazing nine years, and uh, I think this is our seventh year on TV and it's been great. Well, you've, you've built a winning tradition here, Coach. We're used to winning games, winning championships. Uh, the, got about two weeks to go. Let's go win another one. Yeah, we need to get one for the room. We need to get one right here. One more right there. Got to get one more. That's what we're going to shoot for here in two weeks in Asheville. Thanks for being with us. We'll talk to you again soon with more Inside Mercer Basketball.